ready? Cool. So let's start. Hello and welcome everyone to the Creative Cast. My name is Lucas Hellman and today, finally, we're having a photographer on the show. All right. We have Martin P. Hall on the show. Welcome to the show. Hey, y'all. I'm very happy to be here. Very, very happy to be here. Good, good. You looking good with a blue shirt with an... Well, the Papa Guy on it? Yeah. I got, I got, I had <laughs> Tell to me how about my, it. I had to wear my blues. I'm a big anti-social social club fan. And I got like a little matching like mm. a headphone case to go with it. He has like and, and, a and, fake camera. And it just it just <laughs> it gives <laughs> me the whole camera. vibe. And I always call it my Sunday blues. But Can these I? days I always wear like something from this brand. And this is like, I just love the color right now. It's just like one of my favorite colors, even though I'm not a blue guy. Yeah. But hey. Uh, cool, cool. No, it does. It does suit you. Um, and you, you know, how are you feeling today? It's... The weather kind of plays along with us. Uh, I think I brought good weather with me. The forecast said it was going to be shitty weather, actually. So, yeah, it's very shitty. But, yeah. but, I'm, but I'm feeling just peachy. It's a Saturday. Um, and, <laughs> you know, like at the end of the day, Saturdays are good days. Definitely, definitely. Um, I like to start, just like I always do it, with you actually, you know, getting your story out there so we get to know you a little bit better. Mm. Well, um, I am a photo media designer. I recently just finished my diploma. And I pretty much uh, grew up internationally. Before I was 18, I touched six or seven continents because my parents worked for the Department of Defense of America. And uh, I moved to Germany when I was about nine years old and kicked still around between American and German schools. That's how I also learned German. Mm -hmm. And before I came into photo and media design I, or photography in general, I actually studied law for a while because I was set on being a lawyer. Yeah, eight semesters of law. Okay. I was I was very stubborn and staying in there, but I actually like traveled to St. Petersburg, Budapest, and stuff like that with the lawyer team, mm -hmm. and I was very involved with that. So, but after a while, I just noticed it just wasn't for me for just sure. people reasons, and uh, I wanted to do definitely something with uh, fashion design, and I ended up doing something with photo media design just because uh, of the uni that I found and. I wanted to start something immediately and all the other unis were just asking me to wait for a certain period of time. And um, I didn't <laughs> like really take myself too seriously at first. I was just like, yeah, I need to learn everything. Mm -hmm. my, my parents and my mother uh, always had a camera in her hand. So it was something that came kind of second nature to me to kind of learn photography again because I already had some involvement with it. Like on the side? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like and, um, we, we took like photo tours. We, I was with her as sometimes like her bag where I carried like her lenses and stuff like that. But of course I got like a second camera in my hand. Yeah. And I took my pictures and stuff like that. But I never really just, I thought about it. I would just like try and just do whatever. And then when I came back to it as an adult, it was kind of like, what do I want to do with the camera when I had it in my hand? Mm -hmm. And um, my first pictures, actually, I was um, in the south of France with my mother and she uh, asked me, well, that exact question. And I was like, well, you do great star trail photography. And I took uh, some astrophotography of the Milky Way. And funnily enough, I took a self-portrait of myself under those said star trail. And um, you can also see Mars in great opposition at that night. So um, since my nickname is actually Mars, um, I am pretty much Mars under Mars under the Milky Way. So, <laughs> so meta. It, it was a great start <laughs> to the photography game. I was like, the, the universe is with me. And um, I just uh, went from there. I kind of started as a, a people photographer and I slowly uh, kind of worked on my style and got into uh, editorial fashion photography, fine art photography. Mm. And uh, that's, yeah, I'm doing a bit more poster design these days to live up to my design like name, but it's uh, slowly coming. I have to work my way always into those kind of subjects. I'm very careful to always call myself something before I've actually worked myself into the material to sure. say, yeah, I can actually present it and be like, yeah, this is this is mine. So where's yours? <laughs> 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 give it, give me, give me, give me. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you don't want to, you know, brag about something you you're not feeling comfortable with. I put my name on that. Right. Like I put like these days when someone's asking me like what I'm doing, I'm just like, yeah, I'm a photographer. And uh, recently I've been having uh, just different experiences as a photographer too. And uh, when different people act different ways these days, I don't have to think twice about if I give quality work or if mm. it's just, um, I'm a weird person or something like that. It's just like I stand, I stand behind like, hey, I, I have a concept. I'm respectful. And yeah. I just um, I'm trying to get further in my career somehow. And mm. uh, right now I was uh, actually listening to other podcasts and other classes to get like further uh, with my like own like meta in photography. 
And uh, a photographer said, yeah, you can't just make excuses for what you want to do. You have to also like just do things. And when you're like at a certain stage, like I was at the stage at first where I w- didn't have any models at all, no network. Mm-hmm. And then when I came to Dusseldorf, I built a network essentially from a dancer network that I found in Holland. So I, I did the work of just like traveling around to build something. And now I don't have to like look for necessarily every model when I need it. I have other connections that give me that, those kind. Of, oops, sorry. sorry. Um, uh, but I have other connections that give me th- that kind of contact. And, yeah. Uh, it I just, mean, you build your own network. I- exactly. But like the growth is there and like the quality of work is just like phenomenal from where you see mm. uh, where I started just taking pictures because I thought, yeah, I'll be in some kind of design area and photography might be like some fun hobby. And now when I'm taking it seriously and just trying to have an actual like rule of thumb composition and stuff like that and actually mm. have a story embodied in my work. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a different game field, definitely. It's, a, it's really uh, challenging and intriguing at the same time how people perceive your work. But uh, yeah, the growth has been phenomenal. I'm really just excited to see when I put in the work for another like lockdown mm. <laughs> where I can be because at the first lockdown I was like, oh, well, there's some things I can work on. And uh, now, um, again, uh, sitting somewhere completely different than I was a year ago, yeah. completely different artist, completely different person, and uh, it just, uh, yeah, growth. It, it kind of ob- um, obliged you to work on yourself, didn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a very big, you have a big mirror in front of yourself yes. a lot, too. Yes. Exactly. Um, you don't want to be known as a certain type of artist that does a certain things or whatever. Um, you think about how, like, also you, what you, what you're speaking to or how people see your body of work. Most of my portfolio is built off on Instagram too, and like, there's also certain like cliches I try to avoid. Mm. Um, I think that Instagram is obviously a great tool these days for artists and stuff like yeah. that. But I've always, uh, or I've recently said a lot to myself, I do not want to be an Instagram photographer. Whereas um, where I was starting out in photography. I was very, very um, oriented on what people on Instagram were doing. Sure. And these days... Which is not necessarily bad. It's, in exactly. It's not bad. But um, there's uh, also a certain bubble that also just Instagram photographers keep and accept at the same time because the global opinion on Instagram doesn't have to be exactly the artist mm-hmm. opinion. Um, in artist circles, you could be like phenomenal, but you just don't see it because you think like you don't have enough likes and haven't done yeah. net- networking and stuff like that's that. That's a trap, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that's something that I had to um, think myself out of for um, the beginning of my work because it was like I said, no network or anything was yeah. going on, and then that's the steady progression now these days, where I just find just random people and we just do really really great projects mm. and. Um, I started a new job as an e-commerce photographer recently and I connected with some people there and we started to do some um, editorial work outside as well. And then you turn around and you're just like, wow, uh, the connections are growing. You just have yeah. like different different ways to get different people now. Mm. And you're trying on different fields. Mm. Um, what I just wanted to add on your background story mm. is that um, I like when people like you uh, start out um, trying out photography um, especially uh, when they're younger, when they're maybe still at school, mm. or, um, they haven't needed to make that decision yet. To okay, what do I want to do in life? So they just they get to know photography as what it should be, and um, you know, as something fun that um, you know fills you with joy. Yeah, that moment where the picture just clicks for you. Yeah, it's just... like oh, this is awesome. You know, this this is uh, you don't think in. Uh, of it as an art but you think it as um, you know something you can play with mm. right something that brings joy to you and it quite conditions your approach to photography um, if you get to know it like that mm. compared to when you jump in on it out of need because you want to make money very true I, don't, I, don't th- I think I would not be the photographer I was also um, if it wasn't for the, the involvement of my family just because like I said I'm um, going on different trips and doing different types of photography like animal photography or whatever else mm-hmm. um, it was fun and yeah. then all, all of a sudden I had a camera in my hand it was just like what, well what do you want to do what, what are the things that you have been staring at photography wise and then you kind of like find out that oh those magazine covers, those those posters, whatever else. Um, I'm also g- getting more and more into video again. I mm. took a video class in high school and I just b- 
because of law school, I just uh, like neglected those kind of like projects or things I like like doing. And now I'm, I'm, I'm looking around like all these things that you like doing. You love posters. You love magazines. You can do those things. Now, now with my diploma, I've learned how to do those things. And now I'm just uh, just trying to fine tune everything so I can bring it on the market. And yeah, I've uh, been also when I have like photo shoots and like clients that I get along with really good. I try to give them a, like a little poster where um, I just like designed whatever their name into it or like the title of like the, of the photo that I picked out. And then it's just like kind of was like with a certain typography and whatever else. Or sometimes these days I've been trying to go out a little bit crazier and make like a really cool pose combined with flowers or like some kind of gradients and stuff like that so it's a lot of following the fun and mm-hmm. like you said it's a, you don't think about it necessarily as oh what uh could appeal to like this and this and that and that it's uh just what do i like what do what, what, what could be cool for me and what does uh i think fulfill my need of like a good art project yeah, yeah. i mean it it is a weird way of putting it but photography should be to a certain degree selfish <laughs> you should put yourself um you know as the main benefactor of what you do when you do photography you that's know? hard for me it Ooh, is for that you. is hard for me i know i know but I, i'm not saying it should all just be for you you know there's photographers like war um war mm. photographers and that is different but there's a certain part that is just fulfilling your dreams uh, right which is necessary and it's not bad to do something for yourself like there very true very true but that that has a lot to do with like who wants to get involved with those dreams too with photography sadly there's a lot of communication that needs to be involved with a lot of different ways like how things are done these days Mm -hmm. and especially like uh i do a lot of fine art photography and that has like some implied nude work and stuff like that as well so um when you're working with like implied nude and nude work obviously you try and do like a very thorough briefing at, at the beginning and then I've had a lot of projects where I've had said briefing and then I end up not with the package that I was kind of expecting to get out of with that project. Mm. So when you say like be selfish in photography, I would love to. Oh man, I'm I'm trying. But like I've cut alone the last just just this year, just 2021. I was about to say 20. I forgot 20, that was already a whole year. Ooh, but 21 <laughs> um, so fast. yeah I was, I was like snap and you're still you're still here your hair is just longer <laughs> the fro the fro's there oh yeah but um anyways but uh yeah uh the um i've cut four five six projects tfp projects in 2021 alone just because TFP? of uh to time for pictures um okay. when a photographer gives uh their time uh, with the model for free pictures mm-hmm. um, pretty much and then like different rules apply every time but like yeah it's pretty much a free shoot yeah and like I've had a couple of those like shootings where you just try and set over a concept and you discuss the concept and stuff like that and then at the end of the day yeah so much work just didn't get out because like there was some kind of miscommunication where we didn't like come, come together again sure and that's really sad but like um, that's where I've become more and more selfish because like I've obviously said to myself now you have the degree now you have like the experience your work is really on par with a lot of other people's work it's not like you you're that hobby person anymore that just does this every like so often Mm. uh people need to put some respect on my name (laughs) and just uh let me be because sometimes like i'm I'm the person that likes to play around and like really like come to someone else's vision and stuff like that but when i end up not with something that i was expecting at the end of the day it's become more and more frustrating and now i'm working with equipment that like i have like a little home studio now martian martian studios y'all come by and have some fun it's getting there it's 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 great uh like a little backdrop i got my studio lights and everything and uh it's it's, it's actually it's actually like if it was a little bit bigger i could do everything (laughs) it's always too small right it's always too small (laughs) it but uh, yeah i just uh i i can do so much stuff that i couldn't do at the beginning of my photography because at the beginning i started out in my living room on a table with like a white door as my backdrop more yeah. or less or like my my curtains as a backdrop and god bless every single one of those models that work with me y'all thank y'all you. save my <laughs> y'all save the, the boy i mean i could not i could not say that i did uh, I, I was working towards fine art and stuff like that but these days when i look at my work i was like yeah you you, you tried your best dear god don't do <laughs> that e- don't do that ever again 
if anyone refers to this work as your best work, shoot, <laughs> shoot me now. No, but we do all start somewhere, right? Yeah, we have to. And, and that's where I also try and keep my um, open portfolio and Instagram as uh, open, yeah, as, as up to date as possible with like almost everything. I thought, like, obviously, you archive some things that didn't work out mm. here and there. But I try and have like a little progression mile because yeah. th- then you kind of see like where I'm coming from and what I've done so far. Mm. And then you also kind of notice, oh, he hasn't done this for that long. Like professionally, I've, I've, I've not been in the game for more than two and a half years. So it's uh, actually kind of funny to think that, like I said, I, I thought at the beginning I could do like this and this and that and that. And I'm still doing a couple of those things. But I've also moved into a realm where like other peers of mine have called me an editorial fashion photographer, which is for me one of the most difficult and like honorable places to be as a photographer okay. in fashion uh, 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 is like a certain uh, for, there's fashion photography for me, which is really, really cool, and really nice. But then there's editorial fashion photography, which I wouldn't yeah. have put myself in because that's something that tells a story. It's really, really on uh of English. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's it sticks out. Yeah, it sticks it, out. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's it's see that, that that's where the bilingual game comes in. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, markant. We know that word. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's just something that just cuts you, and then you just like want want to stare at it for a while, mm-hmm. and um, trying to be create like, edgy, I guess you could say, okay. and trying to create edgy work is for me something that um, I have been called an edgy photographer here and there, but I, I myself do not see my work as anything like it's just always like, oh, yeah, I like this picture because this and this and that. And then I learned about composition or I tried to color grade or something special yeah. or whatever. But um, then people throw something in there and like you're an editorial fashion photographer. Like, oh, thank you, dear sir. <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> but I will do this name quite an honor and since then i've been just like setting out and trying to really just uh put that fashion touch on it and uh, also those new models or like new uh creatives that have been in my uh sphere have been uh put under that kind of pressure i believe mm-hmm. as well so that's also when you like have those like newbie beginners or people coming back into the game that you want to work with but at the same time it's just like sorry I, i'm sorry sir but i'm not there anymore I, I have to. Time must pass. Yes, yes. I've, I'm not there. I just like uh, like a time traveler. I cannot go back to the uh, to that future. But I, I do want to pursue these like big, big, big projects. And yeah. like also, Corona has been like a, a huge damper on some of those big mm. projects that have been coming. But okay. um, a few a few ways have been worked around. I mean, we we have the testing now. I've got my uh, first uh biotech biotech uh vaccination yesterday you did already yeah. yeah so i'm one of the lucky few that might be fully vaccinated come summer so hey hot girl summer is back <laughs> good for you i haven't managed that yet so far but. yeah i have friends in high places um but I'm, I'm really hoping to get back to a lot of uh different projects and kind of like not worry that much about like those kind of things as uh the vaccinations and whatever because sure. it so just, that it just doesn't in. stop you yeah it doesn't stop me as much but um bigger projects are harder to come by especially since you want to do some things outside for it right now we have the curfew and i want to do like a lot of like nighttime videos and stuff like that and then you're just sitting there like well do you want to risk saying I'm working here, officer, or do you do you really want to um, just uh, let it go? And um, for right now, I've been letting a lot of things go. Um, for example, um, I, like I mentioned earlier, I'm pr- I'm a participant in a he- pretty big uh, collaboration with Continuous Visuals, a mm-hmm. photographer from Amsterdam, who organizes shoot days usually monthly. And um, I've like been there since day one, and I've helped out and been t- part of the organization committee and. It's just uh, um, something that we got 30 people together, photographers and models, mm. and just had a huge little shoot day together and had a lot of fun. And that's where like, I built my portfolio, and that's actually where I've done like a, most of my best work. And that has been put on ice mostly, and now we've been kind of saying, okay, look, we, we know the rules, we know the regulations, we're still going to do it outside. And I'm hoping for the end of May to go over and finally again continue where I kind of left off um, more or less at the middle of my career because it's almost been a full year since we had like the last shoot day. Mm -hmm. So I've grown a lot as a different type of photographer and I've done like a whole bunch of different things that I had to like kind of just do here at home where I kind of relied as Amsterdam and Holland being my source for great work for a long time. And now um, when I come back there, I'm just like, well, 
now just really like what what could you do with those like people that are there again because i have like really professional dancers and great other creatives mm. that really like to work and pose and do crazy stunts with me so um really the sky's the limit with what i could come out usually one of those kind of shoot days mm. okay damn all right i mean that's the thing when you build up your network and um you start having all these opportunities all these people you can work with mm. now it's um up to you to decide okay how do i make the most out of it yeah exactly <laughs> exactly you uh, I, i know exactly what you said if you want to make the most out of a situation you have to also offer the situation something a lot of photographers that i want to work with at the beginning i just randomly ask what do you do what what is this what is that mm. and with that kind of mindset usually people don't want to help you that much but if you say you're going into a situation and you ask for xyz And you already come knowing X, thinking this is how you do Y, and asking this is is this how you get Z. Yeah. Then people start wanting to help you a lot more. And of, I've noticed um, most of the doors that I've opened for myself, I've usually just been friendly, annoying them with questions, or just uh, the person who just asks questions where it's not like they have to spoon feed me. Mm -hmm. So sure. yeah, using those tools. You don't want to come across as a rookie, right? Exactly. Well, not not a rookie, <laughs> but like I, I want to come across as a moocher, you know. Um, okay, that every, only takes. Yeah, exactly. So, so, someone who um, in art, like every everybody has to steal a little bit in art. That's that's a gimme. Like everyone does something for themselves, the same but different. Sure. Um, but the trick is also not to do it one to one first of all, and also to kind of uh, still be yourself as an artist. And that's something where I also noticed where um, those, with those free projects I mentioned, mm -hmm. like I was I was just not getting half of what I was trying to get out of it. And it's not like sometimes about like being really stubborn and saying I just need this and this and that and that. But like when the vision is kind of being becoming blurrier and blurrier from what you thought it was, it's cool when you're happy with the work. But when you're just just wondering, well, what do I do with the work and what and like, am I doing like work that's good for myself? Then um, I put myself under like a lot of pressure to get better and better and better. And that's what that's those kind of situations where I was like, well, maybe this connection will get better. Maybe next time will be better and stuff mm. like that. But um, I, uh, yeah, I just had to like distance myself from those kind of conversations and those kind of people as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, at least I see the, the path of a photographer as a continuous, Uh, work of exploring right where um really the key feature you need to bring every time is uh willing to just do something right? definitely without being sure about it definitely if you if you don't want to be there and have fun with the subject then it's not going to get anything yeah everyone can be a good subject for example like when people ask me if i model, model with anybody in the right context yeah, yeah. It, it just uh, if i have the right mm -hmm. mood if i have the right setting or in general if that just person wants to wants to book me as a client yeah of course i'll take your picture of course i'm going to do my best to make you look good anyone can look good you just need a photographer that takes the time put you in scene put the lighting the right way mm -hmm. come on where your chocolates at it put on some berry white gives you some chocolate so <laughs> mm. um something uh that uh stick to my mind was that you said i'm going Back to, way to way back start, sorry <laughs> way way back it's that you said you first um, made your um or took your chances with uh the law right mm -hmm. with um i say that law school law school yeah. yeah there you go um so i just wanted to um give a little incision there and just ask you how that transition went for you like why did you end up doing that and then deciding oh I'm going to change my path into this other thing. Both my parents were pretty much in contracts and contract uh, and contract negotiations as uh, working for the go sorry as working for the government. Mm -hmm. And um, law kind of seemed like an obvious choice since I already kind of had parents that were in it okay. in a way. And um, I had a lot of fun with it because after that short brief respite of yeah <coughs> so we're back from the break <laughs> the not intentional break <laughs> what i thought that i thought that was built in Come that was on. that was completely organized and planned what were we talking about by the way <laughs> <laughs> just for the record i literally forgot to turn on <laughs> the, the, the well the electricity thing And my computer just shut off. <laughs> it was a, it was a very <laughs> abrupt cutoff. I thought I thought he was so bored with my work. He was just like done. Okay, bye, <laughs> leave. 
thank you. No, even a thank you. I like, just fuck it. He's like, nah, I'm I'm good, fam. <laughs> we good. We 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 got enough here. I don't know what the fuck you thought you were talking about, but that's some bullshit. <laughs> So, yeah, we were talking about um, your shift from law school to media design. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I was uh, studying law for like eight semesters. And after a while, when I... Um, eight semesters? Yeah, eight Wait, semesters. Wait, that's like four years. It's, 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 it's a minute. Damn, okay, four it's years. A, it's a minute, yeah. Did you finish it? No, I did not finish right. it. Damn, I, four years. I was, I was even uh, like on the... Uh, student board uh, for the lawyers and part of the ELSA it's called the European Law Students Association and yeah I was uh, the head of seminars and conferences for uh, my uni <laughs> okay very 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 um like it's, it's just a title for someone who organizes pretty much events or like uh, trips and stuff like that mm. um and when I was uh I, I did most of that uh eight semesters in Gießen and then I moved uh for <laughs> about a year to east germany uh in turing uh, mm -hmm. and yeah no turing yeah uh, schmalkalden it's in the middle of the turing of okay. and it's a little very very little town <laughs> and in they were forest. they were very <laughs> very 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 uh racist oh <laughs> very very racist um let's just say like when i was moving out on uh, my uh uh, uh what's it called my mailbox and my your uh, dorm no my, i didn't have a dorm room i had my own apartment okay but my mailbox still was like someone uh put like plastic in it and melted it so like the lock was broken what yeah and like no also tried to break into my like uh to my basement part and stuff like that yeah yeah because like germany I, right there yeah i was trying to get, like put, <laughs> put, put my key i was trying to put my key in both of those locks and they didn't work and yeah. those are the only keys that are open in the whole building sure so yeah someone was okay. playing games all right so that experience wasn't it, it the was best. it was an experience it was was it a good experience <laughs> it was an experience mm. that brought you to west germany <laughs> exactly i was like so how far west can you go i was like oh that's the border that sounds all about good that's a, that's good right there oh, right there but um uh, yeah back then i was uh, i had a girlfriend and she was from Dusseldorf actually and she was like yeah Wherever you want to move, we can move. And I actually looked around all of Germany and looked at like Hamburg, Munich, uh, Berlin, mm. blah, 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 blah. Very expensive at the moment, dear, dear man. Very expensive. And uh, it's, Dusseldorf was actually a city where um, I could say uh, the rent was okay. We had some connections. So you'd think that moving in would be easier. And when I moved in uh, with her, we pretty much just like had an easy like way to some jobs as well so that's how pretty much i came to Dusseldorf at the end of the day mm. and that's how i like kind of started with like uh, photography as well so you started working before you started studying it uh no i didn't really work as a photographer or anything like similar i was i was working as a uh, pretty much a, 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 a kitchen boy and yeah uh, uh, and uh i worked as a business English teacher for a while at the mm -hmm. side as mm -hmm. well because obviously when you're American in Germany you can like sure. get some easy bucks here and there but um uh I really started professionally claiming myself as a photographer mm -hmm. the last year when I okay. actually did my photo media design certificate and then I was oh sorry photo design certificate and I got my photo and media di uh, diploma recently so I'm officially a photo media, media designer Per diploma as of this year and last mm -hmm. year when i did my photo design uh certificate i was like hey now you've actually like had an exhibition and i did an exhibition that was under the theme of being trapped to protect and we kind of were open to how we interpreted the subject and i chose society as my um theme to say that's how society traps and protects us and i took a picture of uh seven letters pretty much that dancers posed as and I put the um, the the pose of the dancer and the letter together mm -hmm. on a big canvas and spelled society. Okay. And that uh, letter was supposed to represent something else. So S represents sexuality, for example. How someone was um, kind of limited in society uh, through their sexuality. We say that we, gays people have equal rights, but for example, they have to go through a whole bunch of more processes about getting married or adopting or whatever, or um, 
just uh, other like like I said the, the seven letters seven uh, meanings you can check it out on my page if you want to know every meaning we don't have to go into every single one of that but that, sure. that but after that pretty much that exhibition that was the moment where I kind of said you need to start taking yourself a little bit more seriously mm -hmm. and uh, I tried to start building my um, web page in the first lockdown last year and I've been more and more progressing to actually say my I, I sorry I, I do want to work with you and I do understand that we're in like some kind of corona thing and you might not have work mm -hmm. but I do need money to pay for my own bills of course so so you kind of really uh, are the start of your career here oh definitely definitely mm -mm. I, I would like to um also you know especially focus on uh, well your mindset that um you know because often people when they come from uh, you know socially more safe degree like for example law school and they uh, shift towards more creative one mm. there's normally quite um <clears throat> it's not an easy change right there like it, normally it's a bit scary mm -hmm. because it's, it's not that say if it's the, the the market the industry is not that well prepared to give all of those students mm. the financial need they have mm. so um i'm fascinated about you know that transition and how that worked for you how did you convince yourself to do that was it like an easy choice for you or was like did it take some time well i did study eight semesters of law and i wasn't happy all those eight semesters so let's put it like that so i definitely put some thought into it yeah um, but um, I think at the end of the day, everything has some risk to it. Even if you're a lawyer, you can be a shitty lawyer. Sure. Uh, there, there was a joke in law school always, if you get like a certain grade in your bar exam, you can still just work at like Neto, Neto as a, yeah. a, a, a cashier. And like you think, well, if that's the joke for law school degrees, well, everyone's on the same playing field somewhere. And um, for me, I didn't really worry about if I was going to be successful in law or something. I was kind of trying to be successful for myself where I think I can be successful in a lot of different fields. I just have to find the field that suits me. Yeah. If I really had probably turned my mind off and really just like tried to, a few different things more, like I tried a lot of things to, to, to get through law school. But I could have maybe tried like a few more things and then pretty much stayed there. But I might, might have been very unhappy still just staying there. That's my point. So it, it didn't matter to me to be good there at the end of the day if I was still just unhappy with like the people around me. Yeah. And that's how I kind of approach uh, art and photography as well. I think I'm going to be successful because I think I'm going to invest enough time and be passionate enough to be good. Mm. And a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you're good. They love your things and this and this and that and that. Yeah. But like for me, it's also like I have to see that I am good for myself. And every time someone says like you're really good, I'm like, yeah, you think I'm good now. I'm still learning a ton like there's so much that I haven't done yet that I haven't had the experience of like five years when I sometimes when I think it's really stupid that I studied law because I could have just like went straight into something artistic and stayed there and then I would have had like years more of experience which could have been like worth a whole bunch of different things too but at the same time I look, I look at things also very differently because of law school and I look at maybe people differently because of that as well so it's always like just weighing in on like where you think you're going to be good and how good you want to be and if you put in the time and the effort a good effort just really just beats a lot of talent a lot of times so if i if people say i'm talented and i have good effort hey i, I think i think it'll work out yeah i, I think i, I think I, I, it's obviously not easy especially during a pandemic like there's people that just they want to work but they can't pay and mm. that, that's a kind of an issue as well and then with lawyers, you kind of think, well, people don't ask a lawyer if they can pay. They, they're there and they, they know they have to pay. But um, sure. uh, getting a valued as an artist is something that every artist has to kind of fight with. Um, it's just something that you have to establish and it's something where even friends and family sometimes have to listen like, hey, I don't. I gave you like this and this and that and that. Like, for example, with TFP pictures, like I, I give out 10 pictures for free. Yeah. And I say I value my work as 10 pictures is more than enough for you for free. Yeah. After that, we have to talk about like if we can, if I can give you like some kind of house price or whatever. But I, I do need more money if you want more. Mm. And uh, I had to really think about like, yo, is that fair? Are you being like an asshole towards these people because you you want to like say this this was a free shoot, but you need to pay for more? Mm. But um, just because hobby photographers, for example, give often all pictures doesn't mean that someone who's trying to go for magazine publications and is working with like 
try, he was just trying to set like a, a certain vision down has to do the same standards. And I think like uh, as an artist as well, you kind of have to always set like how you want to run your business. And if that's just how I want to run my business, that's my choice. So and if I value that myself that way, it might be arrogant. It might not be. I try, I try and communicate it as best I can. You know, it's not, it's not like I try and like do everybody bad. If, so, if, if it's a model or if it's a friend of model or whatever, I try and like bend some rules. There's like a lot of people I try and bend some rules for. But at a certain point, like I have to become stricter and stricter with myself as well, mm. because like I said, gratitude and being friendly doesn't pay all my bills and and, and then you doesn't sit, pay in the supermarket yeah the and, and then and then you sit there and you're just like uh trying to publish like a series or you want to publish a certain photo and uh if you're doing free projects obviously the model has to obviously agree as well to those photos and then you hear often well i don't like exactly the photos that you like as a photographer it's hard it's a hard pill to swallow and yeah and and uh <laughs> I had a boss who also told me as a photographer, why don't you just put it in your TFP contract that you are entitled to picking out some pictures? Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, do I have to really play people that way? Do I have to really say I get to pick what I want? Yeah. And um, but it's not playing them. Well, that it well, isn't. Well, it feels that way because I feel like like why why can't I have a conversation with you and say, hey, I like this picture, please let me use it that way, or the picture is the way it is. Yeah. And funnily enough, I had a situation too where I just told someone, yo, the picture is the way it is. I can't like change it that way and I don't want to change it anyway, yeah. uh, even though there was a certain perception about it. And um, at the end of the day, we had to cut like the whole set because like the other pictures I didn't find were that strong, but that was my favorite picture. And I was like, hey, if, if I don't get like that picture that I think would be the leader of the set, then I don't need the rest of the set either. Mm -hmm. And that's like something where you think, well, am I being mean to this person? Am I am, am I trying to be like spiteful or something like that? Yeah, like, and and that's that's something that really goes through my mind as well. I want to be fair towards my my clients and my people, but sure. like uh, it's it's like you said, valuing yourself and like trying to trying to up your game and trying to become a professional photographer. Those are those lines where I have to say, hey, um, it is you, what it is. It, it really <laughs> legit, legit. Like I, I said, I was like, I was, I was like, like tough cookie. I'm sorry, that's yeah. the picture. I was like, well, yeah, I don't want that picture. Then I was like, I right, and then we cut and that's it. <laughs> Out. Done. True. I mean, you need to ask yourself as well, is that right for your portfolio? Or is it for that person? That changes but, things. Th that's the thing too. It was it was it didn't give my portfolio much bandwidth. The the, the, the photos that I took in that situation, they were they're good photos. Don't get me wrong. I like the photos. Like, or else I wouldn't have wanted to publish them a little bit, but like it was pretty much just photos that, like Polaroid photos that I could take of any model for any model. Yeah. And, that, and most professional models would have to pay me for that because mm -hmm. it's, it, it, that it was just like a basic service with a basic like concept that I wouldn't say is like so difficult for anybody to do. Yeah. Like every photographer just needed a white background and a little bit of light. Sure. And in this situation, I was also playing around with lights for the first time. So it was like, well, not the first time, but just playing around mm -hmm. with new lights and getting used to them. And yeah, uh, like I said, you, you, when you set a certain standard and when you set a certain thing with TFP contracts, I have to say most TFP stuff or depending on the person, a lot of TFP doesn't have to be in such a professional setting as I try to put the TFP stuff. I, like, I also have a contract, which a lot of people sometimes don't have um, the home studio aspect of like doing my work. Or that I spend like a lot of time also editing and stuff like that. So, like different people, different things. Like yeah. I, some people spend a lot more time than me. And do then things a little bit more differently where you think, hey, the, like, why don't you do it more like this person, that person? But that's, again, like, if I value myself that way and if I do work th this way and you come to me in my house and my business, that's where, yeah, um, yeah the TFP it's, works It's out. a matter of what's the purpose of that shooting yeah. and who approaches yeah, who. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did she approach you or he approach you uh, or did you go for him? Um, and yeah. that's all things that mm -hmm. you know you need to take into consideration exactly exactly and um you 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 can do it you know in a written form mm. make it very clear which works very well mm. um you know i did it <laughs> with this podcast for example with all my guests exactly it's a written form it, it, it's guest release done but you can also if you don't want to do that you can just speak up beforehand make it very clear if they say yes if they come back later and say, ah, oh, I don't want that one. You say, okay, look, we agreed on this verbally. Mm. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to do this because you agreed to it. 
and you can't change your mind. And if that person can't accept it, maybe you shouldn't work with that person. That's something that I thought too at the end of the day. <laughs> know, and, and, it would, and, and if it becomes such a dramatic thing, also when you just say no for the first time, I was yeah. like, well, that's this is the first time I really said a, f- a firm no, and this is the reaction I'm getting. Hey, I guess I guess we didn't value each other the same way. I guess it's just like if if, if it's just a negative reaction to that, yeah. But it's, it's credit to you because doing that gives you self respect in their minds. It 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 does. I it, hope even, so. Even though they hate you afterwards, they will respect you more. I hope so. I mean, it, like I said, it, uh, in this in this case, it was someone that I, that I would count as like a good friend. We did a couple of good projects, and all of a mm. sudden, all our work was off of our uh, social media. Okay. It was there, there was all of a sudden a subject that would, I was like, wow, the, and like right now in that person's highlights is like there would be no more work with Mr. Marshall. I was like, oh gosh, like like I thought what? I thought I th- this is my business right now. I yeah, thought, I thought I thought like that you're coming at me like this is. Mm. Hurtful. It will happen soon. And, but that's exactly that, that's growing pains. Exactly. Yes. That, and and the, exactly what you said. Like, hey, if uh, you can only communicate as best you can, and I, uh, and exactly what you said too. I was like, hey, this is like I don't I don't feel comfortable with a certain situation mm-hmm. that we have right now. I need us to talk and be cool with each other before we use the work. Yeah. And I said, if you want to talk, I'm open to it. And that's and that's something where I was I'm always open to conversations. Maybe a little bit stubborn how I think the conversation should go, but uh, I'm 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 very open to those kind of things, and that's where um, I think leave the door open policy mm-hmm. just works best. So if that person comes back and all that kind of stuff, yeah, of course the work can be used. Yeah, yeah. But um, like you said too, I have to like get that respect as well, and I have to I have to establish that, yeah. that it's also okay for me to say no. And as a person that like I, th- I think it kind of comes across as well, it, it it weighs heavily on me to say no like that, but. It is hard to say no. It, Let me tell you that right you, now. You you have to say it sometimes. <laughs> another another person asked me recently, like, "Hey, do you want to hang out, or do you, did you just want to like uh, only work in like a professional basis?" And I was like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm 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 terribly sorry. Uh, uh, I I was only interested in professional basis because I've had too much drama recently, and I had to like <laughs> you know you have to put that professional gaze on you. You don't want to say like, "I'm sorry, you're not interesting for me. Please go." But um, yeah, in the, in this in, in this or any other instance, uh, instance where you're just kind of uh, trying to skate around those kind of uh, semi business, semi casual contexts, uh, I've been burned a few times too many, and then you sit there and. If you all you can do is communication, sometimes you can also just say, "Yeah, I'm taking myself out of the equation." Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, always set things clear beforehand. Mm. Always, always, always. Everything that comes after is open for problems. Definitely, definitely. And working with people, you do, like, like I love the tea that people bring, like the stories and the tea that yeah. you just drink when you're just listening to the the kind of things that happen, or the, the that's just, part of it. It's 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 a lovely situation to be in. But at the same time, you have to. It's it's oh, it's a mess. <laughs> Lord, it's a mess. Sometimes you're just like, not today, not today, Shabbat. <laughs> not not today. Don't test me, Lord. They are testing me again. I'm trying, Lord. I I swear to God, Lord. I, I want to come into your pearly gates, but the sins that are tempting me right now are. Whew. You're getting a little taste of how hairdressers feel every day. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> so, some hairdressers must really just sit there just for the drama. Just like, yeah, of course I'm cutting your hair, honey. You wear off <laughs> very sharp tools in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, going back to um, where we started, I do believe, and that's something that will be useful to you, um, w- which has been already, you know, the your law... Uh, experience and it is that it will allow you to be um, to speak up and be more confident when it comes to charging when it comes to demanding respect to saying no all those things are very hard things that everyone needs to learn if they want to succeed in life with anything Mm. and you have uh, some background that um, gives a little push on that you know, a little De- edge. Definitely, I uh, yeah. The, the the law background does give you a little bit. You get a little bit argumentative in some ways when people try to like come at you a certain way, and mm. I'm just like, hey, I, uh, this and this and that and that. And yeah, clean cuts. If that's the way you want to do, play, then we can play. Then, but uh, be transparent. That's, I I I'd rather not be that person these days. Like it's a very very like you don't want to work that way with people a lot of a lot of the media game and a lot of the modeling game mm-hmm. is uh or working with models as a photographer is who you know who you had good experiences with yes so yeah. um yeah, that's like, very important exactly so so it, like being like sometimes you have to also weigh down do you want to like let something slide or not mm. 
And like I said, saying no is important, or like you said too, and saying no is important. But um, you also need to know when the connection is good and when when like you need to just let let it go. Yeah. But 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 yeah, being in law school definitely has helped me kind of gauge where I think the line should be. Yeah. Because like you 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 like I said, being flexible is not very lawyer like. But um, knowing where a hard boundary is and knowing where, like where you think like you should value yourself. Mm. Like re- recently I just like I said upgraded my studio to have like studio lights. Yeah. And I think like no matter what work I do there that that is an upgrade quality. It's not like the pictures were like not worthy work workable or anything that she wanted the pictures. Yeah. So um, or um, that's worth something. Yeah. In return. Oops. Now I even said the gen- gender of the person. My bad. <laughs> that's all right. Well, <laughs> well, I'll try to stay neutral. But yeah. Anyways, neutral. I work with so many female models. <laughs> <laughs> The truth <laughs> finally gets revealed. Oh Lord! Did you hear that? They kept back QN on. He did the same thing. But he 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 revealed himself all of a sudden. Like yeah, if I was Q uh, or, or like when I was Q, and I was like, damn, you set yourself up with the interview, man. <laughs> you set yourself in the, up man. in the middle of the interview. You did so good for an hour. <laughs> same damn situation. Anyways, it's out, Dorothy. I, I'm calling you out. Damn it, you didn't act right. Your mama gonna know about it now too. So you heard it here first. <laughs> so conclusion is. Um, you know, uh, get that, you know, um, get experience so you know where that sweet spot is mm. between deciding, okay, these are my red lines, my red flags. From there beyond, I say no. And yeah, th- and th- that's before sp- I let it slip. Yeah. And please don't believe that you, you need to be able to work with everyone. You can't work with everyone. Exactly. Exactly. That's the stage that like we were talking about stages earlier. That's the stage that I'm just in. I was in finding stage, building my style stage. And now I've, I've got a kind of a style. I've got a studio. I've got some yeah. things going. So you got to set the standards higher. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. I I want to ask you about the financial side, um, but not, not necessarily on how you negotiate, but your personal way of uh, paying your bills like Mm -hmm. what's your approach uh you uh do you mainly work as a freelancer or do you work for a company i work as a freelancer mostly yeah so it's mainly project based yeah okay i have uh, certain companies that book me like on a weekly basis or i have certain clients that book me whenever a client comes in and needs me yeah i also have uh, assisting jobs or whatever else um so it's like it's kind of like you have about like three or four different uh, like main sources of income mm-hmm. and then you have like the side sources of income i also have um instagram where i have a lot of walk-in clients and stuff like that or yeah. projects in general that come in my way dope, dope, dope. that's good uh you know because it's a very very important aspect that um, it's not always that clear mm. you know <laughs> it, it's 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 definitely <laughs> something make profit you know, yeah uh, well, you have to definitely make this. a profit but you have to also um like i said know know where to make the profit yeah i have a lot of private clients uh dancers artists and stuff like that so they can't be charged too much money they're obviously in the same situation in a sure. pandemic that i would be in but um when i work for um, bigger client companies and stuff like that i have um those kind of prices mm-hmm. and like the, mm-hmm. those kind of like pr- um, packages that i value at uh, those prices yeah and then also I um, have adapted to have enough people in my network to pay a certain price to mm-hmm. get me my like pretty much just my to pay my bills and pay my way. Sure. So if I, I think I calculated it once out, if I paid one of my minimum prices, about seven to ten clients, uh, if I would get those bookings in, then I would be paid for a month. Okay. That's not even that much if you think about it. If that's my basic package, so that they could have more. So if they if they wanted to have like more pictures, if they had mm-hmm. print, if they would, uh, what like something more that complicated, like that. That's just something where I just like, hey, um, I offer a bigger package. Yeah. But like, this is the work that you're getting right now. You just have to add on. Yeah, yeah. That is a good point. Um, um, you know, because everyone does it differently. How do you price? Your project. Mm. What uh, what are your criteria? You're basing it out on um, time invested in the work, mm. time invested in the concept. Um, I do now uh, really value also my education in the subject because hey, if you if you have this diploma, diploma if you, we're yeah. just going to slap it on the wall and we're going to pretend that this is very important from Harvard. So, <laughs> yeah, um, you you put that in there, and I do self educate as well. So it's uh, like even if a photographer doesn't have a diploma and uh, all these things, they don't have to be like from like if you if you put in the time and the work on YouTube Academy, 
grow, that is uh, something that you need to like also calculate into your pricing. Mm. And then from there, um, like pretty much the, those kind of factors come in and then uh, my equipment as well. So um, we were talking about, for example, my add-ons. I start like uh, my studio packages have like different lighting setups and I have like very, very professional studio uh, flashlights. I have like standard uh, stand lights and I have like little LED lights and like depending on what all the person wants me to carry with me that day for a studio shoot my client can say hey I want you to take the whole bag hey that's another like you know dime to that you need to just pay and that's how I just like kind of price myself in the end of the day because uh, those lights for example they're a good representation of I started with one light I yep. got another light and I got another light and hey you love the light the look of the last light that's the price but if you want all the lights, then, hey, mm. then, then then all of the lights will be given in the Kanye voice. But you, <laughs> you, you, you got you got to, you got to uh, pony up then yeah, as well. Yeah, so equipment as well. Yeah, equ- equipment is a big factor. Even like equipment does does not matter is a certain factor when it comes to what you want to do. It does matter a lot. <laughs> like, well, so, so many people. It does so, a lot. <laughs> uh, so, did you not see that like the, the advertising recently where someone was uh, like they did a huge setup for their video with a red camera with this and lighting mm-hmm. and that like that? I was like, and now this is my YouTube video on how equipment doesn't matter, and that's how I kind of feel sometimes too. Is like equipment doesn't necessarily matter that much, but you you do need to you do need to pay a certain price to get a certain look, or you do need to invest a certain like like I said those lights were the, the perfect example. I could not, I could not, could not, could not get that look. Sure, it's not everything, but it's a big chunk of it. It's a big chunk of it, and if you know how to use that equipment too, that's also a big chunk of it. And that's where they, I'm saying education. So you taught yourself how to do it. You looked at the videos you, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Then that comes into the price factoring as well. For example, the, my exhibition piece can still be bought, and um, when I uh, was calculating the price of the exhibition piece, that was also work, time invested. I, I invested a lot of time in the concept alone. Mm. So um, and how the piece also plays together, you can use it as either singles or as a full piece. Yeah, you mean the letters. Yeah, the letters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you have seven letters that form one word, you can just buy one letter or yeah. you can like just buy the whole word as well. Okay. So that's something that also is like you kind of have to think around like how you want to val- like sell your work sure. and, and what market you're in. So when you're um, factoring your work, also what market you're going to and stuff like that, that's just a big thing. Um, model mm-hmm. set cards, for example, they're um easy basic work that anybody with a studio can pretty much do really quickly yeah that's why um the price is fairly fair and low yeah and um for people that i have that regularly come to me i try and like say hey this is this is your house price just come 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 by i got you or whatever Mm. and when when other people i know don't want that much editing or whatever that's where i can also like you know you can you can shave some things here and there for some people and that's how you kind of like adjust but but, um (laughs) i've come into the habit of shaving too much here and there and then i need to kind of like these days uh, set a certain standard for where i say okay i said i'm going to do this for that person just because you want to do more doesn't mean you do more now <laughs> yes. like, so, so some things you do more obviously just because you like you like the concept you want to send mm-hmm. you don't you don't just give out shitty work that's sure. that, that's not the concept of this whole um deal but you you gotta definitely say this is this is good this yeah. is good and that's that's you mean time in Photoshop, oh, time retouching? In, oh, time in Photoshop. Uh, just uh, what equipment, like what lenses I use sometimes. Yeah. Like sometimes I pack my bag and I just think, hey, do you need X, Y, Z plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? And I have a heavy bag, and then I just realize you didn't need all that. You didn't. You didn't need to go for all that looks. You didn't need to offer all those things. You should have just done what you think would have been best and easiest for you, and taken the money and left. But sometimes you're not sure, and it, it is part of being a professional to be prepared for any situation you can encounter. The, hey, the, that's where I got the nickname Magic Mars because I used to just have always my bag full of tricks. So, oh. I, so <laughs> like I'd, I'd always just pop open my bag. So what you need, what you need, what you got. I got I had a little, a little like prism. I had little filters. I had like a little, um, what's it called, reflector. What, you're carrying a prism with you? <laughs> yeah, I used to carry a prism with me. These days I don't, but like, oh. I, I, used to have, like, I used to have everything with me. Right now I have a little reflector in my bag. Okay. You know, those, yeah. those are kind of things that you just like, you just like pop open with. And, and with those shoot days, for example, mm. I didn't know what I was going to have. I didn't know what outfits I was going to get. Yeah. I, I could barely know the location sometimes. So it was like, hey, boy, take everything and anything. You are geared up for war. As a photographer, I was armed to the teeth. Two cameras these days, full batteries, can charge yeah, my yeah. battery, man. The only thing missing now is that I can like just like do a data dump on all my SD cards at one time and just like keep going like a mad person. 
it's 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 wild it gets heavy it's it's wild like <laughs> like these days if i would really like want to go to like with all my equipment i'd be taking a drone a gimbal two cameras about like seven lenses three cameras if i count my analog camera so it's just like hey you do, you do you really need all that kind of stuff and, and that's something that i think you also learn as like a photographer too like you it's you, you don't know what every situation might come with but you need to learn kind of where you don't need that gear as well so like there's there's like a graph somewhere like at the beginning there's someone like with who has like no gear at all and then someone who has like slowly more and more gear and then too much gear mm. and then the professional all of a sudden has only like these three four things in his bag yeah that he always uses so that's and that's kind of where, where i kind of wanted to say hey I'm, get, I'm getting to that level where i'm like i'm cutting down on certain things where i don't need to invest that much time it looks good in camera mm. And uh, yeah, that's just the experience part that you like also factor into your work. Yeah. So I mean, at a certain point, that's one of the main reasons because sometimes you do need all of that gear. That's why uh, most photographers need an assistant. Yeah, I, I, I actually assist another photographer and he has a, a bag that weighs about 25 kilos. He has the old DSLR cameras, big lenses and stuff yeah. like that. And then I just think, yeah, I wouldn't want to carry around three of these all day. <laughs> And he, like, he has like his tripod and then his backpack and the, and everything so he can show the client the work at the end of the day yeah. as well. So, yeah. It's not definitely. only carrying all those stuff. It's also, you know, building up the set if you have, if you need a set, you know, uh, preparing the SD cards, preparing the settings in the camera, changing lenses. Um, can be anything. It can be, you know, assisting the model. It mm. can be, you know, maybe you want your assistant to shoot BDS for you. Yeah, yeah. It, there's, so, there's, there's a b big big realm that you can do as an assistant as well like that's very very true and it, it, it's 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 a fun game it's just mm. like i said like it's a fun game to alone assist i i did some behind the scenes work as well for like a couple of people and also there depending on what you want to give people like the 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 behind the scenes can be phenomenal stuff there's so much like things behind the scenes that can happen or when mm. you like get pictures in between that you're just like wow i'm i'm, I'm just happy i was there like BTS is so important. So important. Especially for your social. So these days it's become like one of the key tools for marketing. Yeah. That's something um, that I've also had to work on a lot more, just working with time lapses or just showing off how I do things. Because mm -hmm. as a photographer as well, I think it's also sometimes uh, the magic show has to go on, I like to say as well. Yeah. We, we, like I said, Magic Mars, we have to keep on with the magic. So, um, but like telling people exactly how you do things is something that I don't want to do. Like I, I'm someone who like will say like roughly how I did it. Mm -hmm. And if you were there, you're there and I'll just talk to you about it or if you're a good friend or whatever. But again, that's something where um, if someone comes to me and kind of knows what they're talking about, yeah, we can talk about it. But like a lot of people just try and off often just ask me one to one, like, how did you do this picture? And I'm just yeah. like, that's where I need to like kind of keep my secrets as well. And Ooh. and that's uh, like, I want to teach people, but then it's like, you can't like give them everything. You have to like kind of, kind of uh, like decide what part is like, okay to give out. Yeah. And, and then like, also I feel like also not giving out everything for me has become something where I saw a few people that were new photographers copy stuff that they knew from other photographers. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't like um, they were models, first of all, and then they kind of like were influenced heavily by other good photographers that they worked with. Yeah. And I kind of thought that was really sad because when I first saw their first pictures and work, I was like, that's just regurgitated work from that person that you kind of worked with a lot. You thought, that's not you. And sure. when you take your camera in your hand, something that should be very obvious to people that sometimes isn't is your eyes and your vision mm. is what people are paying for. Yeah nothing else they're, they're like the, the the camera is doing like a lot of the work yes but how you like edit it and blah 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 blah. that is what you see in your mind's eye and that's something that also needs to be um more valued and has to come across when people also ask you for like your work um as a creative you probably know this too when people ask you your price they're like hey what's this price and then they don't answer you again and you're just like hey i'm just I'm just telling you, like, hey, this is, you like this, what you see. This yeah. is what everyone else pretty much pays. Yeah. Hey, but if they don't value it and they don't get back to you, that's a message. And, and that's a very clear and, message. And that, exactly. And that's where you just, and that's the first thing that you learn as well with those kind of offers or when you like talk to people, you don't take that personally. You just, of course not. You, you just, you just, hey, that, that's how it is. And, and I also include in those messages, if you need to talk about it, if you need to do like a, a, a pay in rates and stuff like that, we can do that because at the end of the day i just need the bag sure sure but uh 
yeah, if you if you don't have the, those kind of clear communications where people like are all of a sudden amazed like how much you cost, I think that people forget. Like I said, hey, we do sit like for hours behind this yeah. work, and it did take like like I said, it took me two and a half years to say for with like confidence, you're a photographer and now a photo and media designer. So um, that path to becoming here, uh, yeah, that that does come with like pulling up my my britches and saying, yeah, it's, it's cool. I'm I'm good with not working with everybody. I'm good with also. Um, saying sometimes that um yeah other people do work differently and other people might do much better work than i do sure but i'm always getting better and if you talk to me and i can like we can see what we can do Mm -hmm. communication is key yeah i mean it's often like that um it's easy um to you know uh, don't accept projects that are under your um, pay rate when you have a lot of Mm. projects that come in regularly regularly but um, it, it is really hard to um, put a wall there when you really have, you're struggling, mm. you know, and you're not getting that, that people in you need every month. So um, it's, it's, it's really an art to, to get a balance there. Definitely. And also, but I've also had to say no to also other clients that like would have, like there were, I had paying clients that didn't want to agree to some certain basic terms for me. And I, I had to say, Hey, I can't work with you then. Like, cr- yeah. like for example, like for a big line that I pull is a uh, credit. And uh, if you can't credit my work for whatever reason, I don't know why we need to be talking about working together. unless you, unless you're saying, "Hey, we won't credit you, but we'll pay you extra." That's that fine. That that you equaled out my pain. Yeah. But um, the company in question was also saying, like, "Hey, we want to work with you again," and uh, things didn't go well the first time we worked together. So it was already like on a rocky slope. And I was like, "Okay, fine, we can work together." But um, let's look at some things that we had some issues with the first time. Yeah. I was like, "Hey, this needs to be in the contract that you need to credit me, like because sure. we had we we talked about this verbally, but you you didn't hold to that when we were working last time." Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, the, there was an issue. Like, "Hey, we we don't want to tell our marketing team how to credit." And I was like, "Well, then." You came to the wrong place because credit should, like i'm not even asking for more money i'm asking for two seconds and saying hey mr martian did this and martian media service did, did they have work. to if they don't have the rights see and that's something where we're like like if you want to get into fights like that yeah you can you can like i've thought i've thought about obviously like saying like yeah i'm you have to and obviously yeah. that's, as a lawyer i do know where i'm going to put you that can actually thread in. sue them <laughs> like hey hey I, I'll, I'll put it in there and some people say, like think that i'm playing around when i say like hey i will do those kind of things but like at the same time i was like hey you know what i'm just gonna let that situation go because that situation became really toxic as hell that, yeah it, it, it if was they were showing yeah. that attitude yeah there's no point exactly the, they they already went with like we, we we had like a little collaboration going and then they went with someone who i brought in the boat who was supposed to be under me mm-hmm. and he pretty much went to them directly and it was just all of a sudden like you're splitting my work with oh, someone yeah it was just yeah. like okay wow guys I thought there was some, you know, like like trust built here. And I was like, yeah, but we still want to work with you for Germany. And I was like, hey, like this was not the deal. Sure. So yeah, that, sure. that was already the basis that we were building things up on. So when it came back to like just crediting, where I was just like, hey, I'll let everything go. I just need credit. Hmm. It, that's where I said again, like this is where I think uh, I, I need other clients. You are taking me on what I like show and mm. other stuff. So pretty much what you see is what I get work from. Is someone yeah. th- something someone said, and I think that's a very big thing. Like if you see my work, if you like my work, then you need to also credit my work. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, something you should know as a photographer is when you take a picture, you have some rights definitely, above that picture, definitely or all rights. And uh, there are different kind of rights you have, and you can sell them if you want, or which is normally the case, you you don't. You don't. No <laughs> hell no. You someone someone went to recently buy some rights, and they it, offered me a price. It's very expensive. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Exactly. You they, can do that. And I, to. I, I told that person the same thing because they were like, "Yeah, we want to buy the rights to seven pictures," and I was like, "You you sure?" Like, you about to you about to make my year, honey. I ain't, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna work until August, man. I'll be done. And yeah, and they they in their their first offer, I, I kind of looked at it and I was like, oh, honey, I love you, but no. Oh, how much did they want? For Ooh, it? they were low. They were low balling. Like, they were low, especially for seven. Okay, okay, for seven pictures, just yeah. between photographers and everyone who doesn't know photography, uh, usage rights combined the complete rights means that you can sell pictures, you can do everything else, and you do not have to credit or do anything with a photographer anymore. So I'm cut out the picture after that point. So that's where why we're saying this is expensive. Yeah. So seven pictures. Um. 
like the person the and like i said this is a dear friend and per- person who's invested this is not against her in any yeah. way form or fashion love you honey if you're listening to this <laughs> but like the, the the first time that was offered was uh not even in the uh Three, yeah, in a three level area. So it was just kind of like, yeah, um, for seven. Under a thousand? Yeah. Oh. And, and yeah, that's why. For seven? Okay. Yeah, for seven pictures. That's, 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 oof. That's not, that's not cutting it. <laughs> Depends on the pictures, but it sounds pretty low. It, it, well, the thing is, that they wanted to do like an exhibition and stuff like that. They were already okay. talking about. So I already knew that there was a certain value there for them as sure. well. And they were good pictures. They're also part of like a project that I started for mm. myself. It was, um, a projector series project where I take a projector and I put designs on uh, yeah. bodies that are usually nude. And uh, that for me was something that I really wanted to underscore that the nudity wasn't the center of the subject, but the design and the person falling into the design was the subject. And one of the models wanted to buy it, which I thought was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But again, like those, are, like that was like my my baby concept. And I was like, hey, this is my baby concept and the value for that is definitely uh, yeah. Uh, for at least one uh, uh, full usage credit uh, in about the thousand yeah. area. So um, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say like I'm, I'm somewhere in the like 10,000 area or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. It needs to feel um, well equaled I'm, out. It needs to feel right to you. Mm, uh, well, that that's true, too. But like 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 we said earlier, how do we factor in stuff? And that, that, that's where I was factoring. For example, like I saw the concepts online. I created the concept more for myself. I defined it more for myself and it's become like a steeple in most of my portfolio work. When I show this, like these kind of pictures to other people, they usually are just blown away and they really love it. Like I've shown mm-hmm. it to also to older like photographers and they've said, wow, it, great, do do more. And that's something where I think like, hey, uh, if you're showing different people a subject that's kind of sensitive in a way because nudity uh, has for some, some whatever godly reason become such a taboo subject for so many people. Yeah. But like if you're showing like these these essentially nude pictures uh, of with pretty much designs on them and people keep on saying, hey, this is great, then I know that the, the value of that is also a little bit higher than my other work as well. So then when I was coming to seven of those, I was like, hey, the sure. I, I, one of my best, some of my best work, then yeah. I, I, I And that's where, again, I was saying that you've come a far way that you knew that this is something that is really good and that I like. I could have taken a quick payday, but at the same time, like the quick payday wouldn't have made me happy because I just know that a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, that's great. But might have never, 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 never said my name. Sure, sure. I mean, yes, once you do sign such a contract, Mm -hmm. um, you lose all rights to ever see any dime further coming on from that. (coughs) You have to give them your roars, everything, everything. And um, I reckon, you know, you probably could have. Uh, at least charge a thousand for each. I th- I, for sure, I definitely think so too. Because again, like as soon as like it comes to those usage rights, they can sell prints. They can have exhibitions where they yeah. they, they, they want they money for. They will make profit. And the, exactly, I'm like I I do not have <laughs> any cut. I do not have any cut to that profit. So mm-hmm. yeah, they obviously have to like make that money back. But the money that they can make back if they market it the right way, if they know the right people or whatever, yeah. hey, that's that's their business, you know. Yeah. So totally, they just yeah. want to cut it short, but. Even if they, I mean, I can't really, I don't really know. Mm. But normally, when it's when it's a it's a good set, mm. and you you probably have exhibitions, you make maybe books out of it, or you know, there are thousand way, or maybe you sell off copies. Mm. I think you can easily um, spend uh, up to ten k. Yeah, 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 and yeah. still make make at least. Um, maybe four or five x profit on that. The 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 there's a little calculator online that you can Google for these kind of things. Yeah. And um, I just like for example like looked it up how they said it. The sum was kind of like out of my ballpark for for example like I was always always saying I don't I do, I do not think people need to pay that much money for like I do not think it's realistic. So um, I took that number though and I minus a couple things. I was like da 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 da, da mm-hmm. and I was like hey if you keep also my name in and blah 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 then we can say this number. And um, I was still like in the in like the higher end of uh, around ten thousand for seven pictures. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, like I thought, like I said, the the number that they started out with on that like calculator was like around like twenty to thirty, mm-hmm. and it was just like okay, yeah, no, that's uh, yeah. It depends on how how well known you are, how much mm-hmm. referrals you have, yeah, how many expositions you had already. How well you're selling. Two publications, one exhibition under my belt in two and a half oh, years. Oh, dear oh. good. I, I mean, it, it's, it's all right. <laughs> okay. It's all right. I'm, I'm working on the, I'm working on my list. I'm working <laughs> on my list. Don't worry. I got, I got some plans. There's some, there's some more coming. 
<laughs> dope, dope. I'm excited to see that. Um, I want to throw at you some um, seemingly innocent questions Ooh, that hit me hard. may not be as innocent as hit, they seem. Hit me hard. They they come from uh, listeners, you know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was wondering. I was wondering what your listeners could be asking. <laughs> hit hit me. Hit so me. one of them is now that we actually you know talked about equipment as well is if you could pick one piece of equipment for free, which one would it be? Um, I'm a Fuji film user. So um, uh, Fuji film has a new camera called the Fuji film GFX uh, 50S or 100S. I'm sorry, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. It's a camera that essentially has 102 megapixels on a mil frame uh, format. And uh, I would love to tinker with that. Um, there used to be like the, 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 the previous version of that. The medium G format, right? Medium format. Okay. The previous version was uh, all the GFX 100 and that had 100 megapixels. Sorry, but it was a tank and it cost about 10K alone. And now this new like version. the body? Yeah, the body. <laughs> just, just the body. Yeah, just yeah. the body and the sensor. And I was like, okay, my car. The body means without lens. Yeah, without just exa case. exactly, just in case someone knows. Um, but uh, the new version of this uh, camera essentially is smaller. It has like more modern technology, blah, mm. blah, 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 blah. And it's half the price. Nice. So I'm thinking, uh, yeah, that that GFX uh, 100S would be um, mint. That would be great. Give me like a nice little like <laughs> telezoom on it and like one prime lens. Ooh, the art I would create for y'all. Ooh, the art right, it's digital, right? it, it's oh, digital. It's, digital. Right, it's okay, definitely okay. it's it's a mirrorless camera uh, still and it's just uh Fujifilm just creates only mirrorless cameras, but yeah. they're but they're very known for their um sensor and their RSO uh sensitivities mm -hmm. because Sony makes their sensors and um they're very also well known for their colors. Sure. So um as uh, someone who defines themselves as a color guy and just loving the look of the colors that Fujifilm gives, mm -hmm. I think 102 megapixels would definitely give me like a Definitely, like just a color vibrance and Christmas to the image that would Christmas, <laughs> crispy, 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 crispy. <laughs> the Christmas to the image. I love that. <laughs> I, mean, I swear, you just like cold. Yeah, just yeah, very, bite, very sharp. The, the sound of uh, biting a chip for anybody who's biting a chip right now. That that's the sound that my pictures would make every time. Like I, I get a perfect picture. Crunch, 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 crunch. crunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, a nice. I mean. In that field, um, maybe it could be comparable f to Phase One or Hasselblad, but um, you know, Fujifilm is not that well known um, when it comes to Very medium true. format. Very but, true. It's, but it's doing not a that well. great job. I've heard great things about them. I I, uh, I think it's more usable than Hasselblad and Phase One. Hasselblad and Phase One are kind of like those legendary camera brands. Oh, geez. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And, I, I rank them kind of in the Leica area that they, they are kind of OGs, but a little bit, do yeah. you need them? And do they have to be 20K? <laughs> yeah, 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 I get you. And the, I mean, the, if, if, if it was something like that they could do that other things couldn't do that cameras sell. Mm. But like at the end of the day, like uh, the Fujifilm GFX 100S has... Like for that megapixel size, that's the cheapest price that you can get, and yeah, and, and the body now is actually cheap. good too. About ten k. So well, no, the the previous one was ten k. Now it's five. Okay. So see, it's cut in half. That is one. very cheap for a middle format. That product. is good. Yeah. So that that cheap. that's where that's where they kind of got me interested again too, because I was thinking myself sooner or later I might have to leave Fujifilm because um I love I love Fujifilm. I have to get like the best mirrorless camera that I can yeah. from them first. You have one right here. Yeah, I, have, like, I just love my um, X Pro Two and my X H One, but um the best one would be the xt4 and that's also a small frame and uh there's only just certain limitations that those small frames can do so you that's mean full frame uh no i don't th those are not full frame cameras okay those are a like apc cameras oh, okay so um Fair like they, they're they're really good and they have a high uh, iso sen sensitivity so mm -hmm. like a, a certain range you do not see it even though i have it really high highly bunked okay but um, because they're just a smaller frame i do not have the same like capabilities that full frame could have easier and that's where I was thinking, do I need to actually go to Sony sooner or later? Because I I, I, I do not like the Sony look, really. But I would be mm -hmm. like, hey, I can use it. I can just make it mine. Yeah, exactly. But um, that GFX could really just change the game for me because like uh, the middle frame would really just like give me more light. Yeah. And as well with the 102 megapixels, hey, if you have more light coming on 102 megapixels, that's light as well. Yeah. So um, you don't necessarily need full frame if you have like just that in between, I think. And like I said, I think like the the megapixels would just even out what the like the middle to full frame doesn't. So yeah, 
I just had to think about um, what we said before. Camera doesn't, camera gear doesn't matter. It's a fact that if you bring the more expensive your camera mm. is, that you bring to the set, mm. the more you can charge. The, the, that's a big. Simple it's a big thing. Gets. That's equipment. That's how like the businesses just work, uh, and especially since it's how it is. If, if I just uh, compare like like when we're just saying does equipment matter, and you're asking me my dream camera, if I compare what my camera is right now to what that camera is there mm. just the capabilities alone of what yeah. i could do and how i could work would be uh, just a, a completely different workflow yeah yeah alone the fact that uh, as a photographer you know cropping is like sometimes an issue and you need to pay attention to on what like kind of yeah. frame you have like how it's you kind can of crop a taste thing really well so, well sometimes it's less like uh, if you can crop in very easily or if you don't crop at all in your pictures and mm. stuff like that and with a, a bigger uh, megapixel size, I could take a picture from far away, and I just like just crop in, no and, and no one would ever notice. Yeah, and and that's where I think like that's a lot of value to the camera too, because all of a sudden you don't need to walk certain distances or don't need to worry about certain things. You just like click the picture you have the scene, and <laughs> yeah, well, and crop it, it in. Shouldn't be <laughs> crop it in. <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. You know, you always have to get it should try to get it right De in the camera De definitely need to get but it right but like like i said if you if you get it right in the camera but then you want to like zoom in and for like a detailed picture or like uh for as a portrait photographer sometimes i get i take pictures far away to get the scene and yeah. then I take pictures close up again to get the face yes there i could just say hey i got the scene and the face in one picture both. just good true edit quick true, true, true and that's where i think like that uh that camera would help me or for example or just like i said like color vibrancy or just working in darker spaces stuff mm -hmm. like that so yeah that that kind of um workflow or that kind of freedom with that kind of a camera uh, would help me but it's not necessary to of get into not. that kind of ge game the camera maybe makes your life easier and it brings you more bucks in but eventually the f the the final client that sees the work that he gets he won't see that big of a difference. Never, never. They don't see that big of a difference. It might be a little bit, you know, depending on what they do with it, if they print it or whatever. They might be able to see a difference. If but you know, it's it, not going to be that big. Yeah, if you know what you're doing, if you know what they want, and if you, if they if they know from the beginning that what equipment you have and that you need to like do it a certain way to get that final product, yeah. then I mean you could do the same thing. Like at the end of the day, to take like one of the, those full frame pictures that a hundred megapixel would take, I would just have to take like ten pic more pictures to get mm -hmm. like the same way. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, but it's just something um, I want to clarify when it comes to. You know, bringing more expensive cameras to, definitely, definitely. to the field, you know. Um, and some brands have are more renowned than others. That's why hey. some people have Hasselblads or Lakers because, oh, I brought a Leica. So yeah, maybe yeah. 10 times what you should. But, <laughs> hey, but hey, if you want to be that guy, that, that's something where I like to say I'm not going to be part of the Leica gang. Like, like, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a game. You play it or you don't. Mm, exactly. So, that, so, so for me, that, that Fuji film would be a dream camera. I think okay, that, cool. that with that price tag, I think I could get into the, to the right room. Dope. Dope. And the person who actually like like does like most like the flagship photography for that camera mm -hmm. brand does some great work too so i could just like refer to, to that person as well like hey look at that if you like that then come my way yeah yeah definitely so that is the piece of equipment you would like to, mm, definitely, to pick up definitely another thing which is another question that i really like is um if you have one what is your favorite picture i actually and why i actually don't have like just a favorite picture i uh, vary to have favorite artists mm -hmm. and i kind of like vary sometimes like what artists i like in certain times and certain moods Give it to or me. Certain, uh, mark ziegler is for example someone who mark I think, mark ziegler ziegler i, I, think I don't, you know, I don't know. Her name um I, I recently saw uh his vanity fair work again that he did last year with uh stars like um uh geez like a few stars i don't remember all the names of them off the top yeah. of my head right now but like the girl from Scandal, the lady from Scandal, he did, and uh, a, a few other renowned actors that just like pop up at Vanity Fair. And uh, there's a few other like Instagram artists, uh, Zep Zep Xavier, for example, he does like phenomenal work. He's a London based artist who does a lot of fine art and uh, editorial work. Just mm -hmm. like very, he edits a lot. He has a set designer that does like a great set for him. And he usually has like a makeup artist and stuff like that as well, too. Mm. Nice. But um, just like a certain picture, a certain artist is, is so hard for me. It's like to certainly say because at times I find myself like varying between like different well, yeah, styles. Yeah, they can change over time. Yeah, so. yeah, and and just uh, I have like one picture that like has very much inspired me. For example, for street photography, mm. 
and um, it's a picture of New York in the summertime, the New York City park in the summertime. I don't remember what artist again drew it. But uh, it, it the pear kissing? The, uh, I think it's the, the pear kissing. You see a, a huge cityscape, of pretty much like, or not cityscape, but like the um, there's a there's a park scene, pretty much, and you see a lot of people. The park is about like 17th or 18th century oh. uh, dress, and the, you just see like uh, uh, dogs in the park, people standing there, and uh, just looking out on the Hudson. I think. Oh, okay, then it's a different one. But it's, no. it's, it's it's a very known painting, definitely. I need to look it up and maybe refer to it mm-hmm. sometime. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's uh, something that I always think in street photography when I'm sitting, like at, for example, at the Rhine, like, and you look around and see that people just sit like living life. Yeah. Like this is the picture that this person saw. Uh, otherwise, um, I'm a big fan of also uh, an artist named Hex, who's um, based out of Berlin. Uh, he's a very very uh, good editorial and fine art photographer as well. Uh, he has like his hex laboratory and and it's just like just crazy crazy makeup analog? and editorial. No, not even analog. Uh-huh. Uh, right. He it just he just calls his uh, he works with a Sony, I believe, actually. Okay. But um, the the stuff that he does in his laboratory, I would say, is just really just really trippy, really sometimes creepy artwork, but also very very just high quality um, portraits in general. Mm. I think he also worked with some rappers and stuff like that and did their album yeah? covers. Yeah. Okay. Dope. Okay, so Hex. I need to check these guys out. I don't know. Def, def, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I could give them your Instagram. They're definitely cool artists. Okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. So um, one thing I feel like, because I'll have, I'm pushing towards having more and more photographers on the show. Mm-hmm. Because it's my good, field. Good, good, it's good, what good. passions me a lot. He wants the gang. He wants the gang. He wants the squad. <laughs> and I want to ask each and every one of them what photography is for them because it, it always depends mm, of, of fine art what fashion editorial stuff like that but like what does it mean oh what, what does photography mean for me oof ooh, that's a, that's a good yeah, question i know i wasn't gonna be okay, easy right? okay he doesn't want he doesn't want to make anything easy on me on this day <laughs> um what does photography mean to me i think photography means uh uh, I, I read somewhere once upon a time that uh, photography comes from Gr- the Greek meaning of light painter. And I think at times if you control light and if uh, you tell a story with the, pa- with the picture that you're taking, something should be like worth a thousand words pretty much. That's a catchy saying again. Uh, that is photography, something that speaks to other people and wants to stand in front of it. Like if, you're, if you walk by paintings of like artists and stuff like that, you often think hey this is art and then for photography or in my field of photography i want that photography though can also be documentative like documentary photography also i think um, a lot of people like lose sight of how uh, we use photography also to do our news settings or how we like set certain moods in certain areas and for example um, when you're documenting a story the first picture that you see some photographer like had to like give you a picture of how that was really wasn't we had to pick it um, also, product photography is also something that we 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 buy our products, and um, I just recently learned pretty much in e-commerce photography: no product that you buy looks the way it was photographed. Of course not. It's it's a complete. Same with it's, food. It's just <laughs> yeah, everything is just complete. It's a complete yeah. show how we do things. So, photography uh, in in many ways is a is a huge magic show, and uh, when you capture a certain moment, for, so for me in in like portrait street work and stuff like that when you capture certain moments and when you have things with stories that's when i think that's the art form behind it Mm -hmm. but also the art form of documentary is also putting people in that scene and they can really like feel that that person's like hunger or whatever or in food photography when you say hey that burger looks good let me go to mickey d's right now and give me some of them whoppers Ooh, I, ooh, <laughs> McDonald's, oh, McDonald's, and Burger, McDonald's and Burger King ain't going to sponsor me for sp- switching that up either. But hey, but yeah, but th- those are those kind of things that um, I think where photography is, starts and begins. Like it's it's the, the the catching the interest, the catching the eye, and somehow wanting to tell some kind of story. Be it that I'm hungry and I need some food right now, or that I need to uh, like spend money on saving the trees in the Amazon. Um, photography has like a huge power on people and yeah we forget it sometimes because we're moving more and more to like digitals and video and stuff like that but for 90 percent of our lives we still rely on pictures or graphic that are just stills yeah so even like as coming as in as a designer not just a photographer i think that um typography with photography and poster design are such uh, crazy strong tools. And then if you look at war efforts in America and stuff like that during um, the beginning of like the world wars, 
where they were using a lot of poster to, um, ads to get soldiers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's as propaganda. Uh, yeah, it's propaganda. It works and, very well together. And, and often those were great art. Also, if you look at um, like work from like the original masters for the Drew stuff uh, for the churches and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it's paintings that are just inspired that oh. came from. It's, yeah, I know what you mean. Michelangelo, David yeah, Leonardo, okay. the original master. Sorry, I was like going way, 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 way back. I was like, where are you right now? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like I, I, I was referring to everybody right now, but um, sorry, now I lost my train. Of thought. No, but I, I get your point. Yeah. Um, it is mainly um, telling uh, telling a compelling story. Yes, thank you. Yes, through imagery. Exactly. Telling it. Yes, exactly. If you have an image and you want to tell a story. For me, that is like this essence of photography. Mm. And if you know how to tell a story, then you're you're just enriching people's lives in different ways. You don't, you don't know exactly what way. Sometimes it's not the way you wanted to. Sometimes it's a different way than you expected. But um, I, I'm responsible for people buying clothes this summer. I'm uh, responsible for the way some people see their bodies. I'm responsible yeah. for uh, how beauty standards are sometimes set. I am uh, responsible for like how people remember certain events. Mm. I'm um, I'm very pre- like like as a lawyer when I went into law, I wanted to be present in different forms and like be useful in different ways. For an artist, my my dream job is pretty much being able to start a project and being able to uh, concept a project and bring it to market fully. So I'm not going to just stop with photo and media design. And uh, when you're just creating those images or creating those things, I want to like build on those stories. So the next step would be for after I made like a perfect story and a perfect like guide to for an image, how can I make that now move in a video or what can I make like a product or something like that would also influence a lifestyle. And that's where as like a creative or a photographer, I think, like I said, I fill the same roles that if the lawyer could in different ways too. Mm. They're there for certain times in lives. I'm also there in different ways. For yeah, them. yeah. You're playing your part. You're playing your role. Mm. After, 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 after I have some chess plays to make, you know, and I, and the the chessboard may have changed a little bit, but I don't yeah. think I've limited myself. And that's where I think also, like I said, like what is photography for me? Like, hey, it's it's a, it's a broad bandwidth, and I can just like I can tell. I can play the field. I, I just need to know where to play. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I like how you not narrow yourself down too much, so you're still open. Definitely, like, to play. I, definitely, there's a lot of things that I still need to learn because I, I think I have a different appreciation now for portrait photography now that I've done more e-commerce photography because mm. um, I've learned like how symmetry and how like uses of different tools in Photoshop and stuff like that are just so so much more important for those things. Yeah. But then like you bring it into your portrait photography, and all of a sudden you see like Ooh, their genes are a little bit wrong. <laughs> And then you just and the, all those things they build for you. Like also, like if I do ever food photography mm-hmm. or stuff like that. Hey, lifestyle photography. If I can get a good picture of someone like fashionably eating something, oh my god! Like everyone's on that. Like he, like no one likes food pictures. No one looks good eating food. But then, but then if you if you get if you get like someone fashionably eating something or like getting like a croissant and some like fashionable outfit, all, yeah. of, a, all of a sudden you have like a perfect fashion editorial story. That is, that is one of the biggest you made things. It happen. That's one of the biggest <laughs> things that you can do. If you get someone like getting their coffee and croissant in the morning with their little like you know Coco Chanel mm. and like, like their Christian Dior Life shoes, style. hey, you done, you're good. Send that into a couple different papers. I'm, I'm working there. I'm almost on that level. Getting the impossible done, man. I mean, yeah, okay. I see you taking the perfectionism from products uh, into it's, it's, uh, it's, portraiture, which is kind of scary, but okay. Definitely <laughs> scary. But hey, if you look at beauty and stuff like that, I've seen people move people's cheekbones up and everything. And you, yeah. just, you look around like, hey, did you take a picture of that girl or that girl? Some of them, you know, it's, uh, I feel like there is like a big divide. Um, some of us are very, very picky and look at every single pixel. Mm. And some of us are very... I don't know. Let let the world give me the picture. Let it just happen. Uh, yeah, definitely. let's find the moment. Uh, definitely, you know? there's a lot. Let's of do the Henri Cartier Brisson style. Exactly, <laughs> just like just, just like just slap someone with a with a camera in their face and just like flash and just like take it out as it is. And I think sometimes those people have it a lot better because they have like not that concern weighing down on them how it should be. They're just like, hey, I, I did what I want to do. Yeah, but they're I think, hard at their at their own way. Yeah, exactly. I think I think I think some, but in other ways, they're more picky with what they do or something like that. Like it looks accidental, but behind every artist, there's like so many hours of thinking about how this accident can look perfect. Yes, yes. Because you 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 happen to be at the end the one that 
picks what's in the frame and what's not. Mm. So you you always are in control. It, it's your eyes. <laughs> it's your yes. eyes. Um, I like to. Um, we, we're getting towards the, the end of the, <gasps> of the episode. Yeah, it went <gasps> so fast, right? Oh, well, no. We even had a break, you know? Oh, my god! <laughs> you remember the break? I have to come <laughs> back sometime. This is actually fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, um, if the if the guest is cool with it, having it come back, um, you know, after a year, after two years. Oh, wow. Know, after he's, some he, time. He's like, you can come back, but not too soon. <laughs> <laughs> not like tomorrow. I was okay. like, I got plans. <laughs> I actually have bookings. Please. Next time you come, yeah, because I do want that. <laughs> Bring your portfolio. Okay. Your, the one you're working on? Yeah, definitely. Please I'll, do that. It'll be a completely different portfolio because right now I have like a little book portfolio and now I'm building actually like a digital one and like a more interactive portfolio yes, as well. Yes, I would love to see. I'll, I'll, I love seeing portfolios while we are doing this. Definitely, definitely. We can like, I, I'll bring some and it'll be like actually a good portfolio because it'll be completely up to date with some sauce. Yeah, I'll, I'll just destroy it like this is shit, this is shit. Hey, I'm, <laughs> used to, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. That's what Instagram and the internet does anyways. <laughs> true, true. We are burned and Inside already from so that. much, so much. You don't know. You don't know what way to look. Sometimes you're like, it's like, yeah, I put, I, I did this great concept. Everyone and they were like, what? It's shit. <laughs> I don't like it. Where's your other work? Where's the work of you just doing some weird selfies? And it's like, okay, fine. Where's the real work? Nudes, <laughs> boobs. Like I don't just want some skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible though so, someone once upon a time said also one, my page looks like a porn page and i was like damn that hurt oh what yeah because i had so many nudes back then pretty much like it wasn't just like blank nudes but it was just like those predicted by series mm. like I, I porn is like not tasteful i do tasteful Ooh. art thank you someone doesn't know what he's saying it, it hurt it Oof. hurt but i had to again like you just like sometimes you just like get over it and just go with it you know yeah 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 totally something i want to say that I can't leave without without you know actually mm. getting that out there. Uh, you remind me of someone. Oh lord! With that fro. Oh lord! And with that American accent right there. Mm. Um, you know Jared Poland? No, I actually don't. So Jared Poland is the is I think he's American, and he has his own YouTube show and whatever. It's all about ph- photography. It's it's called the Fro. The Fro knows photo or something like that. That's actually a good name. Uh. I'm not sure right now, but I think it was the the fro. Tell me with the fro nose photo, mm-hmm. and he he has you know he managed to to get his own business with that you know, getting YouTube videos out there and and promoting that, and he has exact same well it's not the same but similar cool fro as you had mm-hmm. and uh, it's first time I made I don't sort of like an American right. Mm. That sort of like an American. Sort of. I don't. I don't want to be like. I am, I'm, I'm American and okay, German. Yes. I can say like. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. I'm a world <laughs> citizen. I'm a child of this earth. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh. Gaia birthed me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. First time I meet an American. Uh, it's, you know, photographer fro has all these aspects. I'm like, mm, I'm seeing Jared Paul in front of me right now. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm gonna have to hit him up. Some people Check said that. Yeah, I'll, definitely. I'll send it out to you. He, he's a really. He seems like a cool guy. Seems yeah. like yeah, that, like it sounds like a cool guy. Right? If you can compare him like that, then hey, definitely. And and I really find his well, his show very entertaining. You know, he he talks about you know does a lot of reviews and you know what we all do when we go into. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, the, that's, Talking that's about a, cameras that, and gear. That, that's the trick, though. You need to do it for yourself and how you do it for yourself. You yeah, know? exactly. Um, before we uh, end, I would like you to, you know, get the opportunity to sh- give a shout out to yourself. Um, where can people find you? You know, Instagram web page. Mm-hmm. What's it called? So, yeah, I'm Mr. Martian uh, underscore on um, Instagram. I'm coming up with my web page very soon, which will be uh, martianmedia.de. And uh, I hope to see some people there sometime soon. Definitely check out my work. Definitely check out some other people's work that I've worked with. There's a lot of cool creatives um, in the area. And yeah, thank you definitely for having me here and like giving me the chance to have a look, all this fun and shout out. 100%. I'll just like I always do, I'll, I'll, I'll link it all down within, you know, the episode itself and then all my social posts. So you'll be able to find it there. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for your time. I know um, we are always very busy. <laughs> But, um, you know, I always fancy uh, sitting down once once a week, have a relaxed conversation. 
I have some impromptu breaks and <laughs> <laughs> it, it was def- like like I said it was definitely a really cool experience and like um I, I mentioned to you before like I, I think uh, I might start my own podcast one day because it was so inspiring just to see how you do your thing and people have always said like hey he has such a saucy saucy voice can, can you please <laughs> you do have a very get, sweet can, voice can you right there. Get, what do you mean sweet it's sweet I mean, you guys I mean, say smoking uh, man. Put, man see he doesn't <laughs> want to say it's saucy but he knows it's saucy don't worry ladies and gentlemen he likes my voice just as much as you do ask him for the, the saucy guy sometime we, we can do a duet <laughs> <laughs> no but for real like I was, i'm a big admirer of what you do here and like i thought it was really cool how you have different people on this page and that i could have the opportunity to be here i i kind of felt like i didn't like fulfill the criteria be cool enough at first and stuff like that so i was like oh i, I get to be on some of this dude's podcast and like get so to see it up close on yourself. and and yeah so for <laughs> me like it was actually like an experience to see like how i would want to do these kind of things as well and yeah. like so, so one day if i if, if i do my first podcast it'll be definitely a big shout out to the creative cast and uh, everything yeah. lucas is, d- does here because it just is a fun experience and just really cool just to listen into like how different people how different artists get through the game dope that's a wrap right there i appreciate your words <laughs> My name's Lucas and this was a creative cast.